Hi, this is J.D. Fagelson, the creator of Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, and you're listening to the Timo and Harley Show. Welcome to the Timo and Harley Show. Thank you for listening to Timo and Harley show. I am Timo. Over there's my pot and mind crime. Mr. Ben Harley. Say hello, Harley. What is happening, people? Ben, it's not hyperbole, Harley. <laughs> How the hell Timo. are you? <laughs> I'm doing good, buddy. Wow, my mom would be proud of that one. Good. Thank you. Nor good is grief, it a metaphor. Man. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah. She was one of them language arts teachers, Timo. So oh, yeah. yeah. She would have enjoyed that. So, yes. We How are a, you, Timo? I'm doing okay. I'm doing <laughs> all right. Just uh, recovering from the uh, the fragile porcelain mice. Uh, Rock and roll yeah, show. That's the, yeah. The mice slash the, re- the radio station, The Point Show. Uh, yeah. yeah, so it was, it was, it was fun. It was fun. Good. I made, I, I actually made the DJ that the friend of ours, Donnie, that we always go in and, and chat yeah. with on the air. Uh, he announced us on air and I, I made him wear a, a birthday balloon <laughs> out on stage <laughs> because it actually was his technical birthday. Really? It was his birthday <laughs> the day before and it was his radio station's birthday and it was our record's birthday. Birthday, I guess, <laughs> birthday or whatever, and uh, so yeah, so I, I I caught him backstage and I said, listen, I go, I forgot to bring in this balloon. I said, so now you have to wear it. So I tied it to his wrist <laughs> backstage. <laughs> I tied it to his wrist and said, okay, now if you get lost, just stand still and we'll find you. Okay, <laughs> don't we'll be talk able to, to find anybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So, but it was oh, uh, pretty funny. Uh, super fun. Yeah, yeah. Rocket ship was a blast as always. Uh, they were yeah. scooting buttholes across the mm-hmm. dance floor, <laughs> and they had this <laughs> shtick where they jump a boy. Okay, okay, now that sounds kind of creepy, and it is. Believe me, it is. <laughs> but, Wait a second. <laughs> but they always find like a young adolescent or something in the st- on, in the crowd. It's not getting any less creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They pull him up on stage, make him get down on his hands and knees, and the singer, who's probably about six two, jumps over him. Okay. <laughs> and then ta da! That was it. Ah, jumped a boy. So this time, uh, they grabbed our adolescent fifty year old singer. Oh, uh, Scott, out of the backstage, made him get on his hands and knees, jumps him and says, I jumped you as a boy. I turn around. You are now a man. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so they yeah. were a lot of fun, and, and they're fun yeah. guys. What's funny, too, is they're so cool to hang, ar- hang around with, but if you saw them on stage, you wouldn't want to get within a mile of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, which is my favorite kind of performers, by the way. That's that's, that's kind awesome. of the way we yeah. are a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. Especially our singer, Scott. Uh, Snake Ranch rocked. Rocked really hard. Our good pal, Mr. Rob yeah. Wagner, was rocking the bass Rob that Wagner. night. Rob Wagner. Was yeah. it good? Yep. Good? Uh, yeah. The guitar player, Mark Silva, decided to, to talk some Bigfoot with me. Did and, he? Uh, I'm I'm having a, well, I'm having a hard time talking to Bigfoot people because of the the whole thing I got out here with living in the woods and hearing and seeing things, so I'm not buying a lot of the evidence. And I think it makes people think I'm I'm, I'm shook to the core, you know, or something. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 no. I, I, and I was telling him, I'm like, no. I was trying to explain to him if you actually go to these conferences and talk to people that you have a completely different uh perspective on the whole thing yeah, um yeah that, that i can stand there and say i don't believe in that evidence i don't believe in that evidence but it doesn't mean i don't believe these people are seeing something sure and, sure. and i was trying to get that across I'm not sure i was articulating it real good mr ben harley but yeah. we had we had pbr bush beer and i had great bait backstage so you oh. never know what was really <laughs> going Being through anyone's said. mind i do know a bottle of jack <laughs> yeah. daniels got sent back to at some point i did Ooh. not touch it i did not no. touch it i swear to you i don't yeah. do, you know me harley i don't <laughs> no i am nuts yeah, but I, I do not no, do I shots. Do know you, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 no i'm not well, a not a heavy no. heavy shot drinker nothing like that no, um no. 
And uh, but it was a good time. I like to thank everybody who spent their hard earned money to come out and see us play a 25 year old record. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, because I deserve it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I struggle, and I know my facial expressions were a little different this show, mostly rolling my eyes like, oh, I, gotta, I, I was 20 years <laughs> old when I wrote this, literally. It's 25 years. I'm 45 years old, you know? It's like, oh, come on. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, uh, it was that's it was, awesome. Though. Yeah. It's, it's good to have them. You know, the people still come out too. You know, and and a lot of them too. You know, were they were young, right? Mm-hmm. Too, yeah. most of them, Tim. Mm-hmm. And you know, and it's but that's great. Well, I understand. And, it's like seeing the Misfits play their first record. You know yeah, what I mean? And, and like go. they don't want to maybe play it or what? But but we well they probably do. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? It's like it's going back to like your old old artwork and describing what sure. you did when you were 20. Sure. And you're like, yeah, I'm a little better. Do we now. have to? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm a little better now. Even though you're proud of what you had done at the oh, time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, there's some gems yeah. in there. There's a few sprinkled in through there. But, right. Yeah. <laughs> so but um but anyway, thanks, you know, everybody. Look, the club was great. Ben Harley, this was the best though. And and you know that we you just said you knew me, which I'm glad to know because I was wondering if we'd actually met uh, before <laughs> yeah, or we, not. We've met um, a few times. <laughs> right, right. Um but I walked. I kept walking, of course, out the little back secret door to have a smoke. Now, yeah. these clubs are very professional clubs. You know, you pull up, they have they have people there to to, to tell you where out. to park and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you just basically are like you just float through the evening. You know, like and they Which tell you nice. what to do. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, yeah, very helpful. Yeah. Right. So our um, the guy that helps out, kind of watching the back of the club, basically watching our cars. And making yeah. sure nobody gets back. That's a very important person. Yes. Me, and because, making, or I'm telling you. Something. Right. And making sure that yeah. no one gets in the back door because, well, yeah. I don't want to say why, because then everybody will know. But so, yeah. which you can figure out now on your own. But he watches the back door. So I walk out this back door to smoke or whatever. Now, yeah. a gentleman back there, I I know him by now because we've played down at these clubs here last year about four times now. So I see him. I say, hey, Jim. He goes, hi. He goes, how you doing? I go, I'm bummed. He goes, why are you bummed? I said, because the giant claw is on Sven Gulli tonight. He goes, oh, it is? <laughs> My friend, like, oh, we have I'm a bummed. 50s horror fan uh, that, that, <laughs> nice. that, that yeah. watches our cars at night. So we had a, a nice intellectual conversation about the giant claw and movies giant of its claw. ilk. Yeah. Yes. So that was <laughs> nice. So while everyone's yeah. inside schmoozing, doing the thing, I'm out back with the security guy watching the cars, chit chat and hanging out, talking <laughs> about the giant claw. <laughs> it was, yeah. it was what's really stuck out of the, of the night for me, actually. It was going back there and doing that. So, uh, but it was, it was fun. It was good to see snake ranch get back out there and do it. They, they really kicked it. I think they, they knew, Wow, this is a bigger show and a bigger club. We need we need to actually really yeah, get yeah. up there and pull out <laughs> some old tricks, you know. And and they did. Yeah, put the pedal to the metal. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Absolutely. Good. And good. They did. They did. So uh but good times. And I like to thank uh, Snake Ranch, super fun. Everybody at uh, Del Mar and everybody came out. Um good times. Uh real good time actually. So onward and upward, Mr. Ben Harley. Uh, that boy, Timo. That's yeah. big news, but here's the earth shattering news for you. What's that? This is the earth shattering news, Mr. Ben Harley. This, the Tim Owen Harley show has turned over into a new era. Uh A new era. We are Uh now about to enter the green notebook era. Yes, Mr. Ben Harley, I have (laughs) maxed out my Uh notebook. So for 120 (laughs) weeks, let me make sure it's right. Nope, 70 weeks. For 70 se- weeks. I don't know where I got 120, but for (laughs) 70 weeks, Mr. Ben Harley, I have held on to old red. Old Red has been my notebook. Oh, no. And and listen, (laughs) that's the last page. That's it. Wow. That's all I got. So I I got the green notebook. So starting next week, Mr. Ben Harley, everybody (laughs) needs to tune in to see if I take better notes on the green notebook. Ah, the green meanie. All that's right. right. Yeah. That's right. So that's well. pretty much the extent of my weekend. Now, we do have an Ultraman show coming up. I believe it's March 1st with a band, Mr. Ben Harley. You're going to love the name of this band because I love the name yeah. of this band. Hell Knight. Hell Knight. Hell Knight. Ba- yeah, they're named after, after the movie. They're named after the I guarantee it. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Uh, their yeah. bass player, Eric Eister, he's a big horror fan. Big fan. Okay. Like, like Rob Wagner, me. 
type big yeah. fan. So we yeah we have conversations sometimes about movies that no one's ever heard of and things like that. So but uh, <laughs> yeah. that should be good. Now this weekend, now in the space time continuum, Mr. Ben Harley, I just yes, got sir. that meaning we record this show a week ahead of when you hear it. I just yes, got done do. my fragile ports of my show. And this weekend in real time to us, not yeah. to the people listening. No. To the people listening, you have just either gotten your ass beaten or you have beaten <laughs> ass, one of the two, yes. in the wrestling yes. ring. So in the space-time continuum, you are wrestling this weekend, but you're going to have to wait until yes. next week so you can tell everybody what happened, right? Because it hasn't happened yeah. in real time yet. Yeah. That's really convoluted, isn't it? Is it? Isn't that crazy, Tim? It well, it's hard. To, yeah. You know what? But what can we do? Mm -hmm. You know, when, you know, the technology we live in, Timo, you know. Yeah. And we're still trying to bring it to the masses, so sometimes we have to jump on that space time continuum. And uh, but yeah, um, yeah, we're about to lay it down, Timo. Oh, yeah. uh, I know uh, one of our newer promos came out or interviews, which was nice. Uh, and uh, yeah, things are things are uh, reaching a crescendo uh, with a lot of stuff besides the circus of pain, believe it or not. Uh -huh. uh, so we'll see what happens. This uh, I'm interested to see. Even from a wrestling standpoint, see what happens uh, this Sunday. Right. You know, we know what the Circus of Pain is going <laughs> to do. So <laughs> we all know. You've been but, paying uh, the refs yeah. off. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Now hey, you guys, now you guys also have Facebook pages and stuff too. We probably we probably yes, should sir. talk about that more. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, yeah, we do yeah, the, the Circus Cir of Pain. Yeah. We, all, yeah, we have a Circus of Pain on Facebook, and also. That handsome devil, the potentate of hate, right. could always use a couple of likes here and there. There you go. You know, yeah. <laughs> even though he doesn't care. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he hates likes, so give him to he him. He hates likes, so <laughs> give him to him. Yeah, right. make him mad. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Yeah, so. But yeah, mm -hmm. very excited about this weekend. I have a okay. few uh, things. It's our Valentine show, Timo. Oh so, uh, boy, you know, gonna be gonna be. I'm gonna have to go out and get some. Uh, some conversation hearts and some uh, <laughs> valentines to spread. Kissing uh, hands, shaking babies. Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to make some people nervous. Okay. If at all possible <laughs> well, this go. weekend. I want to drive some people nervous. There it's you go. Alice Cooper song, I do believe. So, there yeah. you go. All right. So next so. week, I guess you have to report back from that and let us know how the how the Valentine's beatings went. Ah, yes, sir. Yes. We're going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot of arrows through hearts. As okay. Well, that's good. Yes. That's good. So, <laughs> yes, all right. So, yes. Well, let me get you to a few things I watched uh, here real quick, Mr. Yeah, Benroy. Yeah, uh, But yeah. a little busy week. Kind of a busy week. But I yeah. got a few things in here. I got a few things in. Um, first up, I did not, ah, oh, darn it. I didn't write down the name the or the year of this film. And I'm good about that, but I didn't do it this yeah, time. Yeah, you are. This was the 90s, though. I can guarantee it's okay. like 90, I don't know, 90, let's say 97 or something like that. Um, okay. Smilla's Sense of Snow, starring hmm. Gabriel Byrne, uh, Julia Ormond, um, Richard Harris. Oh, uh, It's a hell of a cast. Let's just put it yeah. that way. Hell, hell of a cast. It's sort of a murder mystery that has this bizarre arc to the story so this little kid uh, unfortunately jumps off of the roof of a building so they think oh. the little kid had, had an accident or killed himself or something like that and then it ends up with some conspiracy involving ancient space worms um <laughs> Wait. this is a very strange movie mr ben harley um, Wait a but it's very cool it's a very gr it's great it's a great movie it just happens to have ancient alien space worms <laughs> so <laughs> you got that going for yeah you. yeah but neat, neat little it is a neat little movie though it is a neat little movie so it's a, it is a wonderful cast just a yeah. terrific cast actually in it and i'm only touching the surface of the cast everybody is like wow when you see people in this movie uh based off of a book usually you know that helps out because all these people sure. sit around snorting their coke and reading books and <laughs> <laughs> and they want to be in the film version because <laughs> so uh let's see yeah. here i hope you're not starting coke and reading books right. yeah. uh let me see here from 1957 yeah from 1957 mr ben harley i that's watched a, a little while ago. it is a little while ago but i watched a that's future dvd bob super special oh a future dvd okay. on blu-ray <laughs> Uh -huh. Okay, on blue. Yeah. I said Blu-ray, right? On Blu-ray, <laughs> yes. yeah. the Abominable Snowman, the Himalayas. Ooh, okay. Yes. Uh, All right. Mm. Damn. How's it look? 
I, I'm Peter Cushing in high death, black and white, my friend. <laughs> it's as close to kind of funny like, yeah. that I get. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm telling you right yeah. now, I had a lot of Peter Cushing this week. We're going to talk about Peter. Yeah, well. we have it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it looks really good. I was very Does impressed it? with it. The, the audio is a little funky, a little like noisy and stuff, yeah. but I, that could just be the audio track, you know, that, that they have. I think they could probably clean it up more. Again, this is a DVD Bob super special. <laughs> yes. Right. So, yeah. so this is a tide me over. Basically, until something might come out someday. Sure. Uh, but it's not out on Blu-ray that I've ever seen. <laughs> so I, I'm not, mm, No, you would know. I sure. would think. You would know, my I, man. Unless someone put it out, you know, I don't know, in like Siberia or something like that that I didn't <laughs> know about. Which they, I usually know what those two. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> had a lot of fun watching them. It's been Harley. Still my favorite and best and eeriest Bigfoot uh, film, Bigfoot huh? Yeti type movie. Yes, yes, sir. So, yeah, you like that one. I you? sure do. Definitely enjoy it. It is a that. good film, though. It, it's really a good one. Right. It's um, a gem. Let's see here. Moving on. Yeah. Now, here's a go, Mr. Ben Hardy. This movie's yeah. been talked about this year a lot. Sort of. Sort not, of? Maybe not this movie, but a movie with the same title. Okay, okay. now, Mr. Ben Harley. I have gone, I have been tiptoeing the racist line for a couple weeks. Last week, we talked about the Klansman, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> this week, I, I couldn't let, <laughs> I couldn't let my hood get dust on it, right? So. No, no. <laughs> this week on Amazon Prime, Mr. Ben Harley, from 1966, I watched the original version of the Black Klansman. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, it's sir. That. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, How'd that go? You know, I really enjoyed it. I really did. did. It's a 1966 B movie directed by Ted V. Michaels. Okay. okay. Now, or Michaels. Michaels or Michaels. Michael. I think it's Michaels. Okay. Now, Ted sure. V. Michaels made things like the Corpse Grinders All right. and things like that. Um, he, he, he's a 60s drive in push the gore and booby limit type of guy like a Herschel <laughs> Gordon Lewis or David Friedman or someone like that. Uh, okay. I think Ted V. Michaels now he runs around. I think he's dead maybe, but the last few years of his life, he was making movies with video cameras of women stepping on him in high heels <laughs> and trying to pass these off as like epic barbarian movies and stuff. So you'd watch this movie and they'd be, they'd be in like his backyard <laughs> <laughs> and he'd get like I don't know, like Michelle Bauer and some other actress to come over who are aging themselves, put on like like leopard skin bikinis, act like they're in the past at some time, and then step on his stomach with stiletto, with stiletto heels. Wow! I can only imagine, <laughs> Mister Ben Harley, there might be a fetish going on there somewhere. No, there might be something that it, no. So no. <laughs> so imagine my surprise when there I'm might watching have been something in the past. <laughs> childhood yeah stomping or something i don't know mm -hmm. so imagine my my shock and surprise when i start watching this movie it's actually it's actually fairly compelling it's pretty good but there is okay so the story is this and now spike lee remade this and it was up for best picture this year yeah it's called the yeah. black Klansman. so he remade yeah. it all right I, I, i'm yeah. not a spike lee fan i did hear along the grapevine from other people who are not spike lee fans that this one's pretty good Okay. So I just haven't yeah. seen it yet. Um, the story is is that okay? There is a guy. I guess he's technically African American, black, if you will. Uh, okay. But he's very, as my friends annihilate, who are black by the way. Or actually, they are. Uh, they are what? black and white. <laughs> yes, they are yeah. both. Their mother is what? Has Mixing white. Together? Yes. Uh, they would call this guy light skinned. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah. he's he's real light skinned of a fella. And uh, he lives in L.A. Now, his daughter lives back down in, like, Alabama or something or Georgia, wherever, wherever. Um, okay. And there is a firebomb thrown at a black church. And a little girl is coming out of the church right when the firebomb gets thrown. A little girl gets killed. Just happens to be his daughter. Okay. I guess a strange daughter or something like that. Little girl. So he flips out. Goes back down to like Georgia or Alabama from LA or whatever and infiltrates the clan yeah. as a white person. So <laughs> okay. now the difference between the difference between him as a black person and a white person in the movie is a little goatee and a little bitty hair piece right on top, maybe <laughs> to kind of straighten the top of his hair out. That's about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And he looks he looks really white. He looks like he could yeah. be related to you almost, okay? <laughs> oh, so it kind right, of bro. works. 
Until the end. Yeah. <laughs> well, he infiltrates a clan. To infiltrate the clan, he wants to do this to get revenge for his daughter, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So when he's revealing himself. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm looking at this going. It's almost like Clark Kent taking his glasses off. <laughs> you know, yeah. in a way. So at the end, you know, he's, he's revealing himself saying, you hold up right there. You know, this and that. It's me. I'm not who you think I am. Blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. the, and the grand wizard guy is standing there and he's like, what do you mean? What do you mean? And the dude pulls his little hairpiece off his head and goes, ha-ha! <laughs> like that. And the clansman <laughs> looks at him and goes, oh, you're a blank. <laughs> like, yes, my friend. The little spider hairpiece on the top of his, you know, he pulls it off and it's like this big reveal, not unlike the Superman <laughs> Clark Kent thing. That was a little funny, but this is not a very funny movie. Let's put it that way. It's actually done okay. fairly well. It's done okay, pretty good, yeah. and it's it's a it's a decent story. You know, I mean, it really is. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, and it was made in '66. I just couldn't believe that Ted V. Michaels did. That's all. Just okay, pretty, yeah. pretty amazing to me. Um, so no, but, I'd like to see that. Actually, that was pretty funny. Though. Yeah, no, I mean, and it's 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 just like it's only a couple parts like that that are funny. Okay, because yeah. of for it's, it's a very low budget 1966 film from a really stinky low budget. Filmmaker, you know, <laughs> right, but, right. He, but he did a good job in this and everything and uh it is on prime okay. um and so yeah yeah check it out i know i think uh, dvd bob is on his table as well i think this film ah. is so uh yeah the black clansman from 1966 <laughs> mr ben harley so i got my racist quota of the week so there you yeah, go you mr. Did. Ben Harley. Yeah, you, did. you know sometimes i actually just watch this stuff going Jesus Christ, people really hate each other that much? I mean, come on, you know? <laughs> Go to work. You know? Watch some Andy Griffith. I don't know. Something. Do something, man. Gee whiz. What? <laughs> man, come on. Lighten Give up. a brother a break. Gee whiz, man. <laughs> so anyway, but uh, Mr. Ben Harley, uh, did you watch anything this week? No. No, not a thing. No. Damn. No, actually, I, <laughs> well, I didn't watch any Black Clans, man. Ah oh, man, come on! Like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, Tim. Let me see here, my friend. Let me let me whip this out real quick. Uh, oh, ouch! Now, now, Timo, you know I'm the duck. Uh, I, I watched a little some Vikings, buddy. You know okay. my Viking show wrapped up, like in real us, life, like, like going across the lake up there, or just on well, TV. No, we we fought we. We repelled them years back. Oh, so they, yikes. Yeah, we haven't seen any. Uh, I'm from down south. I wasn't there. So, yeah. yeah. Well, they will come up the Maumee River, though, Tim. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Tim, you know, there used to be, uh, speaking of, I probably could have uh, taken the Erie Canal. I No, I know I could have taken the Erie Canal all the way to your house at one point, but they had to go and pave over it. Uh, My right road here, was so. the Erie Canal? Yeah, actually, right in front of my <laughs> shop for the most part. Yeah, really? it was the Erie Kid. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we would have linked up, Tim. I could have linked up to the old Mississippi <laughs> right down, <laughs> down uh, let's say, uh, Dayton Way ish uh -huh. area, you know, and then followed me down and met Tim. Oh, yeah, for sure. You would have sent me a text in a bottle. <laughs> yes, I would have. <laughs> Just threw it in yes. there. Oh, yeah. boy, look at that. Holly <laughs> was watching a movie three weeks ago. Look at that yeah. there. Huh. Yeah. Just sending one back. <laughs> Oh shit! It's going yeah. the same way, the opposite direction. Yeah. I can't send them anything back. Yeah, yeah. Gotta go by mule, Tim. Yeah, get pulled by mule. Right. So, yeah. Um. But yeah, Tim. No, at my the Viking show uh, just uh, wrapped up for another season. I guess they're gonna do one more season, but you know it'll be twenty some episodes or something. Right, so right. you know how that goes. Uh, but uh, I've enjoyed it. I, I I I do like this show. There are some characters like my one of my favorite ones in the show. Anybody I've talked to about it. Absolutely hates, so that's okay by me. So uh -huh. I guess I don't know what it is with the heels, Tim. Well, it's something about them heels, Hell, man, but you know, uh, yeah, people don't like the, the most bad part. guys, Mr. Ben Harley. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> They're so charismatic. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, but uh, sure are. Yeah, Friendly. so that. Yeah, Who is there to right, help, right. help you out. You know? <laughs> yeah, very, very inviting. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, uh, um, but. Uh, uh, you know, I do like the Viking show, um, and I do kind of look forward to it. Now, if I if it's not on for a while or I miss it, I'm not going to pee my pants or like my whole week hasn't been fulfilled if I don't see The Walking Dead or some crap like that. So, right. you know what I mean? I just 
<laughs> right. I, I'll live, but I do like that show. Another one that I do like that we've talked about is Gotham. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Gotham's it's amping up. It's been really good. There's some really crazy, crazy stuff going on. Some, you know, with this show. I'm usually about 75% on board for most of it. Some of it's going to irritate me. Some of it's just like, huh? You know, mm-hmm. like what? But it, it's okay. It's all right. I got to relax a little bit too, because some of these characters, it's about how they started and stuff like that. It's not about them, you know, 20 years down the line. So, right. right. <clears throat> so I kind of have to look at it like that too, mm-hmm. but still have enjoyed it. Yeah. So we're, we're getting through the Gotham, Timo. I'll let you know when Batman shows up. <laughs> That'll be when <laughs> because it's over. It'll be over. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. One of the things that we were kind of watching now, um, <laughs> They had like a serial killer marathon going on this weekend, and uh, that's enlightening. Uh, All right, yeah, yeah, on the Reels channel. Oh. So, oh yeah, I like that shit. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, there's all I, the documentaries and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. So stuff, I did yeah. watch a lot of stuff this weekend. Now, I didn't, I didn't murder anybody, as oh. far as you know. I didn't, geez. Now I got a big basement here at the shop, but there's oh. not 37 bodies in. Ah. Two, but wait a second. Did I say that? Wait, hold on. Uh. Hold on. Wait a second. <laughs> yes. Uh, so I did watch, um, you know, they had your, your, you know, the Bundys and, and Gacy on there, which which were very interesting. There was a mm. lot of stuff that I I learned. Um, they had a couple of them on there, you know, uh-huh. and I did learn a few things that I didn't know, which I don't know a lot. I'm Here's the thing. I'm not a big uh, serial killer guy. I'm uh-huh. just not. Yeah. You know, I like horror movies, you know, for the most part, you know, I mean, I, but I'm not a guy that's like, oh my God, you know, and I read about, you know, Ed Gein and stuff and <laughs> well, I want to have a, you know, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I am, know. but look, there's a dirty secret. I don't think I've ever said this on a show. Now I am an engineer, yeah. right? We always tease right, about right. that. I went to school for engineering. Right. Oh my God. Electronics engineering folks. Yeah. Uh, but believe it or not, when I went to, when I went to college out of high school, I, yeah. I studied psychology for two years. So, sure. so yeah. I am fascinated with well, the I'm, serial killers I, I, and stuff, and I do watch shows. But I know what you're saying; well, it doesn't you don't too, draw into the stories. I, yeah, I'm it's not depressing. drawn to the 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 violence of yeah, it yeah, and the exactly. goriness yes, and the and the, and the sure. that type of stuff for me. It's I call me squeamish a little, but then again, here I'm a guy who dresses up, calls himself the potato hate, and carries a bloody <laughs> skull right. around on a stick. So who am I, you know, and I and shove it in people's face? So who am I? to say you know right you know. right but uh yeah i, I just you know because there's some people that are really over fascinated with these guys and people mm-hmm. that just for me it's a little unhealthy right but then again here i'm the one talking and i spent six hours or more <laughs> over the weekend watching right. you know and they did they so the bundy stuff which and it's so funny how much of that stuff has been used in horror films sure. and things like that throughout the years. Mm-hmm. And and um, uh, Gacy also, you know, the whole oh, Pogo thing God, for me. Gacy, Gacy was just oh, wow. Man. Yeah, they, and 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 here I, and I feel bad about this, but I'm like, I'm hoping they please show these pictures of Pogo. I, you know, because those for me are the most frightening ones, right? Of him because. And they had a couple. It looked like a couple that people must have sent in or something that had seen him at a parade or something. You know what I mean? Right. And I mean, they are god awful, shocking photos to me. Those are the ones that are shocking. It's not a. It's not a. A clown with bloody teeth and and his brain hanging out. No, this is a real human being. Like, and and like his facial ones. Like the way he would paint the stuff were more sharp, pointed right. stuff. And I've been a little bit more fascinated with clowns lately because I've managed two fucking guys that are clowns. Right, 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 right. Two clowns, you know, and right, so, right. and I'm trying to, you know, you, put stuff into our show. I'm not going John Wayne Gacy clown stuff. Well, you know, by you know, my, means, you, you know, like, you know, my friend's season of risk, Steve Tulipana yeah. that runs that club in Kansas City that we went to. Yeah. That, you didn't get to go to it, but like me and Danny and Angie went. Yeah. And yeah. Steph, when we were at the show in KC, the, his band season of risk. They were in Entertainment Weekly because they they got Wayne John Wayne Gacy to donate that famous Pogo painting painting really? for their for their album cover and oh, uh, yeah, it was yeah. all over like it was all over Entertainment Weekly because it was controversial yeah. at the time that they were actually doing. He was that. selling them for like two hundred bucks a pop. 
Well, you he know, got yeah. They got permission. Show. They got they had yeah. corresponded with him and everything. They got permission from him himself. Yep. Watching some of that stuff too, and then um, they also uh, talked about the Green River Killer. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, God, well, what's his Kansas, name? Right? Uh, no, he was like out in Seattle. Um, oh, I'm thinking Seattle of Gary area. Ridgeway. Yeah, this is Gary Ridgeway, okay, but well, yeah, he was out. Oh no, BTK. I think I'm thinking of BTK. I'm sorry. Yeah, Go ahead. Kick, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, who also, wow, hmm. was, I followed that yeah. BTK for a while, be, mostly because of America's Most Wanted mm -hmm. and things like that. But yeah, no, so that, yeah, this Ridgeway, oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he was an ass. So I, I mean, I knew about the Greenway Killer, or sorry, Green River Killer, right. just because of it, you know, that name. And But I didn't know, that was one that I didn't know really anything about. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, except for the name. Right. So that was an interesting one to the point where it's nauseating. You're like, oh, Jesus. And they're like, they kept saying, you know, like, oh, he was just like the nicest guy the next door. You know, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. they showed the one picture of him. I'm like, that guy's out. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> That's the yeah. devil right there. Look at his eye. I, mean, I know. Oh, like, God. he was handsome. He was a part of it. It's like, he yeah, was a like, fat, mm, bald dude with a bad He's mustache. A you know, it's like, oh, <laughs> God. Yeah. It was like, oh, that guy creeped me out. So, um, watching those, and then also they spoke of the woman in Florida that would kill the Eileen Warnos. She kill, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. She would pick up uh, guys, Johns, yeah, shoot whatever, him. and then kill him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now was Warnos. that was that based uh, that movie Monster yeah, based yeah, on her? Yeah, yep. That's what I kind of thought. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen it, but that's what I thought that it was based. She on was her. like, oh. yeah, you know, there's some things with me, but I think she. I don't know if. She, I know they call her a serial killer, but there's something in me that says that maybe she was damaged. Like she was killing oh, yeah. people, but I don't know if she was some like you get, you get like yeah. a, like a, um, I don't know, like a Ted Bundy or you get like yeah. a, a, a Jeffrey Dahmer and they, it's just wired in them somehow. Something. Yeah. I don't know if that was her or not though. That was the thing. Like, I mean, BTK I was, was little, wired. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. you know, so yeah. whatever. Well, Angie her, lived in I Wichita think... when that was happening. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> That's a creepy one. Yeah. He's a creep, man. Mm -hmm. What a creep. Mm -hmm. But um, that yeah, Ridgeway stuff was just insane. Yeah. To the point where I said, but with her, I think she'd gotten caught sooner than most of these two. So she might have went yeah. on to do yeah. more. You never She's know. But right. yeah, yeah. She was. She, she had was. the numbers to do it. Yeah. 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 I'm just but, saying. But, yeah. yeah. No, I know what you're saying yeah. too, but I just. Some of this stuff, I said, it's for me. It was is interesting to watch. Now there was one, um, and it was uh, based on, and I can't remember the kid's name. And I and I don't care. I'm not. I don't want to hold these people up. To sure. Oh no, no, I know. get you. Yeah, no, I get you. <laughs> um, yeah. But there was one where, um, and it was. I said the same thing. It was on the reels, and it was talking about like kid people that had were influenced by some of these movies. There was oh, this yeah. kid, he was somewhat influenced by Silence of the Lambs and Hannibal Lecter and also the character was Buffalo Bill. Yeah. There, right? Yeah. And um this took place in 2000, 2002, I think. Mm -hmm. But they just kind of showed how this kid progressively got uh worse, like became like a killer. Mm -hmm. And um he just like uh it's an odd kid but like he ended up, uh, what he ended up doing was he lured, I guess like a lot of these serial killers too. And like in this, in the movie Science of the Lambs, Hannibal Lecter, when he started, he started killing people around him, people mm -hmm. that he knew, you know, and stuff, just like Buffalo Bill did. So this kid devises the plan of killing his two friends first. And he, he had a list. It was going to be his two best friends. Nice friend, right? Yeah. And, then, and then his sister. And, you know, the kid's like 13, and he ended up luring his two friends into, like, the bathroom. He was like, I got to show you guys something. And, well, the bell ended up ringing, so the kids didn't. They, like, dispersed. and like, well, we'll meet you back here tomorrow. The one friend showed up the next day and met him. The other friend kind of forgot about it. Uh -huh. But, yeah, he basically lured his friend into a stall and then stabbed him to death. And killed him, you know, right. like, and then went back to class like nothing happened, you know, uh -huh. like. <laughs> but eventually his body was found and then they figured out it was him. But this kid, like for, for me, like a lot of this is how dead inside these kids are or people are. Yeah. They have no remorse. They're sociopaths. They have yeah. no remorse for any of this stuff. They take what they want from you and dispose of you. Like you're nothing like this kid 
kills his he's first off he's gonna kill both of them at the same time mm -hmm. luckily the one you know just by the grace of god or whatever you know didn't happen that day so but yeah here's a kid he kills his friend goes yeah goes back to class like nothing happens and then when he does happen he could, he first he, he kind of devised a little bit of a story which didn't you know work out yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he just basically told the whole thing you know and then he had like a journal that he would write all this stuff down but he just sat there and they said to him which you know blew my mind is I like, they said to him now do you understand this was that there was right and wrong he, or this was wrong he's like well I kind of think that it was wrong but then the other side of me thinks that it wasn't wrong like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and how do you reason with someone like that? At right. that point, they're gone. Right. They're damaged. Like you said, they're broken. There's right. something to me that your brain is broken somewhere right. where you do not feel pity or shame. And when you get a thrill out of something like that, it's over, man. Because right. then that's all you're going to do. And, and it showed how, especially with Bundy and these guys, how it amped up and yeah. amped up and ramped up <laughs> to the point where. You know, with with Bundy, when you see that smug bastard sit down in like the you know in the courtroom and smile mm -hmm. and laugh, it's like, wow, that is evil right there. That's to me, that's pure. Well, what else is it? I mean, right. you, and you and I think, you know, especially a day or so after watching these, like, geez, man, like I you keep my eyes open. Oh, <laughs> like, I'm always got my eyes over my shoulder, man. Look over my shoulder all the time. Yeah, well, that's, no, what I mean. know, that's what I meant by I, Eileen I'm, Warlock, Warnock, Warnock yeah. or whatever her name is. Is that? Yeah. Is that? I, I think that she had uh, her her environment like pushed her into doing those things, yeah. as opposed yeah. to like this kid who probably had a normal background and everything, and yeah, it was did. just wired Completely. weird to where that mm -hmm. that separation wasn't happening anymore. And I think that's. Yeah. That's the difference to me, and I I do find that fascinating. In that, if we can find a way to bridge that and fix, it. see, I do understand yeah. people's frustration with people who want to study a serial killer versus someone who just wants to put him to death. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I get both sides of that, you know, and sure. and but I, to the people that just want to put him to death, put him to death. It's not that you want to study this person and put them up on it. No, yeah. you want to figure out, is there a way that we can reach this person or these people that can yeah. at least give them a crutch to not want to do that, you know, to, yeah. to be able to understand this is fantasy, this is reality, blah, blah, blah this and that. Yeah. This is wrong and this is why. I don't know. If you don't have empathy or remorse, though, like you were saying, I don't really know what people can do for you. Right you know, at I that mean, point, it's it's just you know, and they, this kid wasn't like you know Michael Myers, you, you know, he never spoke after you know, you know, mm -hmm. the kid was like, you know, and and he thought he was like that, he thought he was smarter than everybody else, and he was gonna you know, and but he just got to the point where he, you know, took it to the next level. Like it's frightening how close to normal these people really are, and and it's well, just one thing, it, exactly, it's huge, and, and but, what, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, but it's close. It's close <laughs> but to normal. No, yeah, you're, you're completely right, and that's the most shocking part about all of it is mm -hmm. the normal lives they led, especially uh, <coughs> Gacy. To me, John Wayne yeah, Gacy yeah. here was a pillar. I mean, Oof. okay, he, he not, let's say somewhat of a pillar of the community. He was yeah. into the politics. People liked the church. Him. There was people that yeah. were feeding him information before you know because mm -hmm. they, they still thought he was innocent and all this you know and helping him because that's what kind of had happened this is what was really crazy is that i didn't know is when he had the jig was up basically and someone had told him they're basically they're ready to uh do a second search warrant mm -hmm. so this person had told gacy that right mm -hmm. <laughs> so gacy went to his lawyers and basically the police had been following him uh, undercover, the lawyers came out and told the police that you need to, if Gacy goes home and tries to leave, shoot his tires out. Don't let this guy get away. I mean, his lawyers ratted him out uh -huh. because he confessed of all the stuff he had done. Uh -huh. And so they, you know, they, uh, it was, I won't get into the whole thing after he left his lawyers. It's a long, you know, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I mean, they, they are the ones that really were like, no, this is, the jig is up on this guy. They couldn't even, under, you know, like, right. oh, my God, you know. So, right. uh, just unbelievable 
these things. But yeah, that's it, buddy. That's it? Oh, okay. That's All it. right. Well, let's get to our official little films here. Mr. Right, Benoit, right. Let's go in chronological order as per let's usual here. Let's All see. Right. First up from 1946. We have the Rondo yes. Hatton uh, vehicle, <laughs> vehicle, House <laughs> of Horrors. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not totally sure how much the title fits the movie, but... Uh, yeah, I, no, it doesn't. Really. Okay, so let me get you a really quick how about uh, story. separate houses of horror? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Different I, locations I, of horror. In that there were some <laughs> horror things going on and houses in the movie, I guess so. <laughs> I saw right. more apartments and flats and things like yeah, that, but let's true, yeah. let's not split hair, shall we? So okay, <laughs> so we got House of Horrors here, nineteen forty six. Let's get you out, uh, movie guy, and do a little movie stort, guy. stort, a little short storyline uh, synopsis here. Here we go. Okay, an unsuccessful sculptor saves a madman named the Creeper from <laughs> drowning. Seeing an opportunity for revenge, he tricks the psycho into murdering his critics. Man, that's it. Um, now, Timo, real ahead. quick, is this a part two or something? There was two. There was two movies with Rondo Hatton, and I think where he was creeper? playing the creeper. Yeah, yeah, because the other yeah. one's like I think a the mystery brute science. Man. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's the a mystery science. I think one or. I seen it on that or Rift Tracks, one of the two. Okay, yeah, you know? the brute yeah. man. I think yeah. was was the other. Yeah, was the other one. pretty mm -hmm. sure. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, wow. So okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, let's see here. First up, something that you may have caught when you were yeah. getting get the movie rolling and stuff like that. The makeup was done by Jack Pierce. Ah, we're on a Jack Pierce. For we freak are out. on a Jack Pierce. Freak freak out. out. Yes. Yeah. Um, now I know Rondo didn't need a whole lot of makeup. Didn't need a whole lot of makeup to be the, the creeper. Um, but I hear some shoulder pads. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. He was wearing his football gear. You kidding me? She's <laughs> yeah. Louise. You know, it's like, yeah. hey, if you're going to work out, do more than curls, you know, yeah. for like 50 years or whatever. Um, yeah. the, the thing with Jack Pierce, too, is that the, oh, unsung part of his career is you realize when you do makeup for a film, that means you do the ladies' makeup. Yeah. And everything mm -hmm. else. And I thought the ladies looked just fine in this movie. Mm -hmm. I think they he looked... did a darn fine job. <laughs> he, yes, he made them look just right in the right light. <laughs> mm. Dog. Uh, let's see yeah. here. This was uh, produced and directed by Mr. Gene Yarbrough, uh, okay. who was, uh, oh boy, known for a lot of these old kind of, oh, like low budget kind of yarns if you were melodramas sure. and things like that uh just kind of kind of prolific i guess if you will um okay uh one of the things that uh mr yarbrough did was she wolf of london if that ah, is yes anymore. now yeah, we like that one uh we already discussed that rondo wears his football <laughs> pads throughout the film <laughs> he's uh, stuffing his of a stuffed shirt <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. so basically uh yeah there is a uh a sculptor yeah and he is going to sell a sculpture to a guy that like just came into some money. So this guy didn't want to get taken for a ride. So he brings who? Alfred. He brings Alfred, Alan yeah. Napier, sure uh, who is an art critic. He brings him to check it out. And old Alan Napier just says it's junk. It's awful. Junk. You know, or whatever. Yeah. Don't buy so, it. Uh, Don't waste your money. Alan Napier in a wonderful and smarmy performance. Man, is he a dick <laughs> in this movie. Good <laughs> lordy. Um, <laughs> He was well, the last one we saw him. He was man. He was not so drunk. Well, he the, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, he's been popping up a lot. We are not yeah, yeah. freaking. I'm going to make some more connections yeah. here, Harley. I'm going to make some more connections. Yeah. So we got. So basically, that happens, and then um, uh, Rondo Hatton is like the uh, the sculptor is like on the I don't know the side of a river or something like that, and sees Rondo Hatton coming out like he's almost drowned, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he nurses yeah. him back to health, not unlike Bride yeah. of Frankenstein or something like that. Sure. And yeah. uh, then he kind of, uh, doesn't trick him, but he kind of goads him into killing his enemies, his art critics, yeah. basically. That's basically Kind of makes plot. him feel bad for yes. him, kind of, yes. yeah, yeah. And so that's basically a plot, and then the cops are trying to figure out who's killing who, and they think the creeper's dead. They think Rondo, of course, is dead because he went in the river and everything. So. Yeah, right. So that said, um, now, I did say Alan Napier, who played Alfred yes, in the... Sixties Batman. Greatest now, television is, show ever. No. <laughs> <laughs> there is a hailed handsome pants in this movie. A Robert yeah. Lowry, Mr. Ben Harley. Yeah. He played a Steve 
what was it Morris? I think or something like that. Um, okay. In the film, uh, did you recognize him? No. Okay, because he was Batman in the nineteen forty nine oh, Batman and Robin serial. So we had Alfred and, <laughs> and we had Batman. Future Alfred and the Batman. Nice. That's right. Um, Let's see. Uh, Stella, the blonde model, did not dry my eyes out or anything. Mm. Yeah, that didn't happen. Uh, Ooh, I the, like Stella. The lovely lady, uh, Virginia Gray, who was the star of the film, uh, she was a looker too. I was just, I was just. She a little, was a pip. She was. I was concerned about her, her headwear, her head. Yeah, she had uh, a lot I, of different I, headwear I, for sure. One of her hats I thought was going to fly away. Uh, it had a, yeah. <laughs> the, the, it was quite distracting feather placement. And then the next and one looked, looked yeah. like a Mickey Mouse type of contraption, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bad hats. She was a little too uh, headstrong, too, Tim. She was <laughs> for a woman. Oh, uh, hold, hold, uh, hold on, hold on, Matt. Hold on, hold on. I liked it, though. She was funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Never done that before. That thank you. you deserve that one. Thank that you, one, yeah. thank you, my friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Um, uh, it it is a it's a forties. It's a dark film noir movie. This is a lurid movie. It's it's kind yeah. of a film noir, but it's almost like um, I'm an early like movie like seven or something like sure. that. It's yeah. not. It's not that intricate or anything no no uh but but it is kind of funny because the guy the the sculptor guy you know he's getting the cops are sniffing around him because the art critics hated him too they're getting picked off but since he really (laughs) didn't do it he didn't do it and they think the creeper is dead so the reason that he got the creeper guy in the first place is that he wants to sculpt sculpt a Neanderthal His man. Face. A Neanderthal man. <laughs> yeah. Well, who better a model than old Rondo? Have? You think Rondo? Did you see Rondo sitting there in this movie like, oh God, I'm sculpting oh, my face as a Neanderthal man now? Jesus Christ! He, he looked a little. Just, he looked a little. He out, did. A little worn out. Yeah, he was. did. Yeah, he yeah. he was doing. It was not quite the thinking man's pose that he was doing at one point, but right. he was sulking like he didn't look happy. So no. here's so here's another connection, real quick. I'm gonna let you take off with this here, but uh, so so oh. I'm getting all these Batman connections. Thinking, oh man, I, first of all, I know Harley yeah. is liking the women in every movie that we did this week. Uh, and, yes. and the next thing I know, I turn, I, I pause House of Horrors to go out uh, with the NGO to take a break, have a little cigarette. Yeah. And uh, who is on Perry Mason but Commissioner Gordon? Ah, uh, good old Commissioner Gordon. Yes, yes. Uh, so now you've Harley- been on a Batman television show? Freak <laughs> yeah. out. And I didn't even Freak. watch the show. Yeah, Television show. <laughs> right. Freak out. Yeah. Now, Harley, so you apparently have seen The Brute Man. I think, did, did yes. I send that to you? I might have sent it to you. I don't I know if we so. reviewed it yeah. yet, though. Um, no, I don't think so, buddy. I don't think and we it's, have. It's actually a pretty good one because it's, it's so funny. When I started it, I was like, I kept thinking, is this... I've seen this one, you know, and then I'm watching, I'm like, and then he finds him on the pier. I'm like, that's the same pier. Cause like in the brute man, he like lives under the pier, like in this, like, uh, like be like a storage shed or uh-huh, something. Uh-huh. Like, so I was like, this seems oddly familiar. That's why I was like, no, no, this isn't the same one. And right. because what's the, who's the gentleman that played the artist in this Timo? He looked vaguely familiar to me. It was Martin Koslek. Or Koslek. But he, um, what it kind of reminded me of is like the old uh, mouse pulling the thorn out of the lion yeah. type thing, you know, mm-hmm. because he saved Rondo. So Rondo felt like he owed him and Rondo liked him and wanted to protect him kind of now type thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And I know that's simplified, but that's what it was, you know, basically. Right. And um, he was a smarmy little chap that guy he uh and there's like a scene with him and he's had his cat and he's like you know cat and he's like you know basically he sent rondo out on you know to kill he just basically says what he he does is he 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 talks about oh this art critic is going to make sure that we don't have money this week yeah and And then then rondo's like oh yeah he goes yeah yeah where does he live? Where he oh, live? Oh, he so like they're not even telling yep. each other what's going down, but yeah, it's completely yep. obvious to both of them what's happening, basically. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So he's really just using Rondo. I mean, completely. Yeah. Right. To silence the critics and things like that. Right. Well, Rondo Ron- doesn't yeah. like that no. towards the end. He finds no. out. Mm-hmm. And he smashes up the Rondo face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Statue. Yeah. 
<laughs> which was probably the Rondo Hatton Award that we mm-hmm. were up for. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it probably was. So yeah. that's, that's, that's what happened to our dreams. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rondo right. said bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, um, it's but, a, you know, the movie, yeah. it, it's it's an okay film. Like, well, because for for me, from my standpoint, as a, from an artist standpoint, I could see both points of view of the two artists. They're competing, but, man, it was cutthroat. Good grief, those guys, man. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be involved in that. I don't, you know, like, geez, Louise, I'm thinking, I'm going to have to go down here and beat up the tattoo artist here in a minute, <laughs> man. Like, yeah. like, well, you stop doing art in my neighborhood. Pow! You know, right, like, right. The- yeah, I mean, they... The- the movie itself is it, it is pretty good. It's a good yeah. uh I don't know, you know, good kind of just suspense. It's not really a mystery though. That's the thing. It's more of a no. crime uh dark lurid. It's yeah. I, you know, they're calling it a horror film and it's kind of filmed like a horror film and it has all the elements to it. It's yeah. not truly truly a horror film, but it's close. It's close enough. And it's no- it's it's a horror film and like Silence of the Lambs might be a horror film. It's not really like a monster sure. or a vampire or nothing like that. No. It's just a dark story about people get I mean, the way he kills women like smacking their snapping their ne- their backs in eh? half. I mean, that's yeah. that's a little horrifying I would I would yes. go out and limb and say. Um but the yeah. thing is this, is that the movie itself, it's actually played really straight, acted very good. Um mm-hmm. I was going through this going, man, this is a little less I don't want to say cheesy, but this is a, got a little more uh, balls to it, you know, than yeah. mm-hmm. I expected. And then, and then, <laughs> and when then. the newspaper guy makes the creeper <laughs> connection between the newspaper caricature and the sketch <laughs> that yeah. Virginia Gray steals. <laughs> Virgi- oh. So the, the artist makes yeah. a sketch of Rondo before he sculpts him. Okay. Now Rondo's supposed yeah. to be dead and he looks quite unique, right? And the cops yeah. thought they killed him. So when Virginia, Virginia Gray steals the sketch from the artist and hands it over to the cops and everything. I guess they take it to the newspaper to write something up. Yeah. And when they, when they, when they make the facial connection between what the newspaper had put as the creeper to the yeah. sketch, <laughs> eh, that pulled me right out <laughs> of the movie. I was like, what the hell? That's a caricature. That's not even, that's like a Warner Brothers cartoon version of Rondo. What the hell was that? I mean, and it's otherwise a pretty nifty little thriller. <laughs> but yeah, that right, pulled yeah. me right out. I mean, shh, <laughs> right out of it. I was like, holy crap. Besides that moment, though. Yeah. It's played really straight. I mean, it is. Oh, really for straight. sure. Yeah. Well, I kind of liked the other artist guy, too. That, yeah, that's um, Batman. Yeah, he um Robert Lowry. He, mm-hmm. Yeah, he uh like he was edgy mm-hmm. throughout the whole thing and he even went after that one critic, you know, yeah. like cuz they were going to do the setup, they were trying to set him up. Right. The and he did. He went over there to, yeah. and was like I'm a, I'll choke you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And then you know the cops come out and <clears throat> that was a kind of a good scene because then you know the gentleman that he attacks like I'm going to go make some tea or whatever and then he goes yeah. in and then Rondo shows up kills him. While the cops and stuff were in the other room, I was like, well, that was pretty good. You know, like right. that took some guts. So, um, especially back then, that would have been a pretty shocking scene, I would yeah. think, you know, yeah. too. So, but, uh, you know, overall, it's like, you're right. I do believe in the brute man. It's a similar story to where he is. There's like a blind woman and he's helping her. So he's like to get money and do things like he's knocking people off and stuff like mm-hmm. that to help her. I'll tell you what, I and think then she finally figures out what he kind of looks like and right. that he's the creeper, you know. So I think it's streaming on Amazon. <laughs> Maybe we can do it in a week or two or something. Sure. Like that. So, sure. But, uh, I'm gonna. What are you gonna do, Harley? What are you gonna give this thing? Uh, I'm gonna give it a mild grape ape up. Okay. I enjoyed it yeah. enough. I, I mean, it wasn't awesome. Mm-hmm. I did like the ladies in it, and I thought, yeah, they're cute. The acting and everything was really good, and Rondo's good in it too. You know, yeah. he's creepy enough. You know. But I tell you, there was a lady of the night in this one. Boy, she's pretty looked pretty fancy for a lady of the night. <laughs> I think all the ladies look pretty fancy. I guess fancy depends in this on movie. where yeah. I'm at. I guess when I make that statement. So. Right, right. Uh, yeah, there was definitely some attractive ladies in this movie. Uh, yeah, it was I'm just good. Give... I, I tease, but yeah, it's it was uh, it's a good movie. It's good. Right, right. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a regular great bait, but I thought it was actually yeah. a little bit better than I thought it would be. Even and I thought it was it was uh, it was made better. 
and produce better than I thought it would be and everything. So yeah. I'm going to give it a regular great bait up. I, I really did like it, especially for 46. That was right in that yeah. poverty row, which this movie is kind of like that too. It's like, yeah. but at the same time, yeah, this one, you can't really laugh at the whole thing. It's, no, yeah, and it's I was got, drawn in tense. by the whole art yeah. thing stuff yeah, too. Course, I was, sure. I, which was cool, you know. And I, I'm not, I'm not an artsy fartsy type of guy, but I, I still, you know, I, I appreciated that. It was cool. Right. That kind of helped me with the, along with the film. Right. So, okay. Well, let's yeah. get to our second official little film, Mr. Ben Harley. Yeah. Uh, from 1972, yeah. we have the Hammer little film. Jump. The Hammer yeah. film, Dracula A.D. 1972. 72. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Little short. I was just warming up to life about that point, Tim. I <laughs> gotcha. Just getting. I wasn't Might have been yet. walking at that point. Not I mean, think I was up and about. And, yeah. I had a year to my existence. So uh, <laughs> yeah. let's see here. Let me get you a short uh, two sentence storyline here um now you're not gonna like the beginning of this because i already wrote down i i there's a something in this movie that i know is gonna drive you crazy and you okay. already know what it is and i already know it is and we're gonna start right here with the storyline all right movie okay. guy go <laughs> ahead and break it for me <clears throat> johnny alucard raises yes. count dracula from the dead <laughs> in london in 1972 <laughs> the count goes after the descendants of van helsing <laughs> yeah, that's choppy, but that's what it is. Yeah. So now it's, Johnny Alucard. Yeah. So Johnny Alucard. <laughs> yeah. Johnny Johnny Alucard, played by Christopher Neem, who is in tons and tons of tons of films. Whether you yeah. know or not, you've seen this dude, and you, he's pissed you off a million times. In films. <laughs> he's had to. Yeah, he pissed yeah. me off in this one. All right. So he basically <laughs> like he he. They, he's kind of a leader of a group of friends, and he's into like he's in like witchcraft and stuff, and he raises. Count Dracula, and then Count Dracula yeah. says, "Well, thanks for raising me, but fuck you. I need to go get Van Helsing, and I need to go get like you know, I, I gotta have, I gotta get revenge on Van Van Helsing, basically, stuff like that." So really, that's true. The whole movie is basically uh, Dracula going after uh, uh, Van Helsing's granddaughter, yeah, Peter yep. Peter Cushing, who's playing Professor Lorimer uh, Van Helsing <laughs> in this one, yeah. Um, and so that's it. And then the cops are trying to figure out why uh, Peter Cushing's or, Prof- or Van Helsing's granddaughter's friends are all dying one by one in gruesome ways. I I, I want to know what the technical term in in England is for mutilated. By the way, I don't know. <laughs> Did you know it's like every time someone was killed, Peter Cushing would go were they mutilated? What do you mean? <laughs> Yeah, what's that like, code for? Is it like gross? What are, we, what are we doing here? You know, I'm like, like Jack the Ripper's <laughs> gone. Okay, yeah. let's relax. Right, right. right. Um, <laughs> now the movie does start. I'm just going to throw this out there. The movie starts yeah. with the end of a previous. I, and I forgive me, I didn't <laughs> fucking figure out which one. I've seen a hundred times. Whatever Dracula films ends with Dracula getting the uh, the wagon wheel, the broken <laughs> wagon wheel through yeah. the yeah through him. So it starts with that. Now here's the cool thing about that though, man. When after he falls down and turns into dust and blubber and stuff like that, that yeah, is a yeah. great dissolve oh, yeah. scene mm-hmm. with the smoke in front of it and stuff. I kind of like to see how they did that because yeah, that looked like a couple different screens and things happening. But man, it was it was good. I love that old stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So it started off really good like that, and then it jumps right into nineteen seventy. It starts in eighteen seventy two and jumps right into nineteen seventy two. Oh yeah. Yes. Rock and roll. Yes. Party. Oh, 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 yes. Swinging party. Yeah. Um, yes. This movie wears its year on its groovy sleeve. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah that's for sure. Um, there's some groovy clothes. I, I'm not a big fan of the clothes from the 70s. There's a few. There's mm-hmm. a few hip outfits. Mm-hmm. But there was a couple groovy ones in this one, pal. I might even have sported there there you some go. groovy threads. Well, I <laughs> know groovy what, ladies. Well, I was going to say too. the groovy lady for me, of course, was my imaginary girlfriend from high school. <laughs> oh. Caroline Munro was in it. Mm. Um, yes, and that's mm. all. I mean, you know, <laughs> Caroline Munro was in mm. it. And I like anything that's she was it. wearing. I'm gonna give it a great paper. Yeah, I mean, really, it's, right there. Yeah, that's about it. I don't um, care about anything else. She is so hot that she makes that Stephanie Beecham or Beacom look normal. Like yeah, Peter yeah. Cushing's granddaughter, who's also very yeah. attractive. Very, very. Because I, I was one. Yeah. <laughs> 
course, I don't know if this was the greatest thing to tell your wife while she's sitting next to you. I was like, yeah. I bet Stephanie Beacom or Beachman or whatever. I bet Stephanie Beacom just hated Caroline Monroe. <laughs> and she's like, why? I was like, because she's like so much hotter. And Stephanie's yeah. supposed to be the hot one in this movie. And Angie's just yeah. looking at me like, you know, I'm your wife, right? Like, yeah. You, know, you probably can <laughs> make me feel a little more comfortable yeah. around yeah. you, the kind of thing, you know. But anyway, I'm just teasing. So we were having a good time with yeah. that. I was teasing her a little bit about it. But um, yes, yeah, so of course, we have Christopher Lee. Uh, who is the best Dracula as far as I'm concerned? Um, absolutely, hands Dracula. down, yeah. the best Dracula. And Dracula. Man, I, you know what? You know why I think he's the best Dracula? Because he is such a dick about it. Yeah, he really oh. kind of is, man. God, I like the dick. blood red eyes too, man. That Ooh. I've always liked that. Yeah. that one. That's always for some reason for me, right? Like, a, I like that. Cause he looks like he's just full of blood. Ah. Oh, I know. No, it's great. No, he doesn't need much. Yeah. It's just he's just he's just right for it. He looks oh, imposing. He as it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He he's probably yeah. the only Dracula to me that I thought was really kind of spooky. And like when I was a yeah. kid, I was yeah. like, boy, I don't want that guy coming around. Um, no. Besides, I guess the Salem's Lot vampires. Those are pretty yeah, that's too. yeah, that yeah but yeah, that's not Dracula though. Creepy. That's not Dracula. No, mm, this is it's just a vampire. Exactly. Um, this was directed by Alan Gibson. Uh, did lots of British TV stuff and everything. Um, he also did yeah. a sequel to this film, which is the Satanic Rites of Dracula, which oh, okay. I am getting soon. So we should be reviewing okay. that over the next couple months here, probably. Um, the ladies in this group are just absolutely fine, but the hottest yeah. of them all. Uh, did you notice the African American sweetheart yeah. young lady? She now, cutie, yeah, they were all cute, but there wasn't anything that was attractive as that hog leg she lit up and started smoking. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> she, she, said, she said, pulled that did. thing out, and I said, Caroline, who? <laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> I was giving Angie a bunch of shit about it. I was like, that yeah. is one hot joint, man. Yeah. <laughs> I give it, oh, yeah, so yeah she is shit. Yeah. Her numbers just went way up. <laughs> now, right. Now this movie, Ben Harley, I, I, yeah. have you I have seen this uh, quite a few times, actually. So uh, going I was kind of going back yeah. and watching it. Have you seen it before? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's been a while, Tim. Okay. But yeah. Um, How'd you enjoy it? I, I actually did enjoy it. I said I I like the beginning with them at the house at the house party, man, just rocking out. And, <laughs> the old people staring at them. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it was great. You know, they're like, "Who's this?" Like, your friends are animals. They're like, they're not my friends. I didn't invite them here, so like nobody knew who they were. Right. They're on the table, and then I just thought it was great. You know, that I, I, I thought it was humorous enough in right. the beginning. But there's some odd characters in this film, like yeah. the the friends, like the one I'm like. Is that Friar Tuck? Because he, like, the one guy, he had, like, a monk outfit type. On, uh -huh, and he yeah. was kind of, like, the crazy, he was the joker of the group or whatever. And Right. So it's an odd kind of mishmash of friends, too, a little bit. But, yeah, as it always is. Um, yeah. Yeah. But old Johnny Elucard, he was the, he was, like, kind of the group leader, sort right. of. But nobody knew where he was from, right? Or something like that. Like, they, it was some kind of. It all tied in with the, with 100 years ago. Yeah, like his yeah. character, Christopher Lee's character, yep. Peter Cushing's character, they were yeah. all played by the same actors, so they're all descendants of these people. Yeah. So they were like, he fate. was a Renfell kind of character, right? Uh, yeah, like, like, kind of like a yeah. Renfield. Yeah. So yeah. So like all fate had brought the bloodlines back together for another yes. showdown in this movie. Yeah. Is that a good way yeah. of putting it? Yeah. And it's kind of funny because they kind of find that out. They go, uh, Johnny Elucard decides <laughs> you love that. that they want to go. And it's kind of funny because they're like sitting around the bar or the go-go club or whatever. And they're like, let's just do a satanic ritual type thing. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, let's go. Yeah. It'll be a gas. And what's Caroline Monroe say? It'll be a giggle. Come on. It'll be a giggle. <laughs> I'll giggle her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll give you a giggle. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you would. You oh. give her a goose. <laughs> a Christmas goose. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you want to stroke the beast? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, <Yeah. laughs> uh, So I thought that was just, that, that for me was kind of funny, the whole way they're going about it. And then, well, you know, once kind they of remind there, me, since you're on that part, I don't mean to interrupt yeah, you, but since yeah. you're on that part, I want to stay. Uh, you, at that point, this movie, and I know it sounds weird. But it kind of reminds me of Night of the Demons. Okay. Where right. there is Angela, the girl in that group, who's kind of into the dark arts and stuff, goes and yeah. sings her incantation, and then demons come up. Well, this was very similar. 
Yeah. He takes yeah. them and he goes into like the church and he starts singing the thing, the in- incantation or whatever. And then the ground starts swelling and things start happening yeah. and stuff. And then they all start getting oh. picked off. And I'm not saying they it's ex- old poor Carolyn Monroe there. Oh yeah. I, was sad to see her. Her. I, I enjoyed watching her as she was going, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I'm yeah. sad to see her actually go. Yeah, um, I wasn't real happy about that. No, no. I was, I was about to turn the movie off. I wanted him to start killing the guys more. That's all I can tell you right <laughs> yeah, now. I wanted the girls too, I wanted the girls to mud wrestle off to the side while he was killing the guys. Let's put it that way. Yeah, that would have yeah, been exactly. perfect film. Would have been like the <laughs> Gone yeah. with the Wind of Dracula films. Um But I just I, I just thought it had that kind of feel. And I I, I a similar well, story kind of to it. You know, that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Well, they don't. And it, it is what's kind of weird, too, is like they all leave, you know, because they're not really sure. Is this really happening? And they all scatter out of there. But Carolyn Monroe and old Johnny Elucard stick around mm-hmm. and Dracula shows up and he takes care of Carolyn Monroe, which is a sm- smart Dracula. Should have kept her around. Just yeah. You know they're gonna follow you around. Them girls, they like you know once they get the bite. Yeah, you can have. You know, I mean, you can have Van Helsing's granddaughter, but you gotta have some off the side. They hang from the ceiling. They just hang up in the ceiling, and they call them when you need them. Right? Yeah, that's they, how they just, do. Just get on the side. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so I wasn't real happy that he disposed of her so fast, but, no. um, like the next day, like the friends they meet up at the club again. They're still like, well, what really happened? And they don't really, you know. And then. Johnny Alucard shows up and kind of s- persuades them that it was ah, it was all a big joke. And well, where you know Carolyn Monroe's character go? And he has an he has a answer for that, right? No. Well, he just keeps so going around and grabs. He keeps, he keeps going, grabbing yeah. all the girls out of their group, yes. bringing them back to Dracula to, to, yep. to feast on. But he keeps bringing them the wrong one because he wants Van Helsing's yeah. granddaughter. And right. that's that's yeah. the movie. The movie is literally he. He summons him up, and Dracula goes, "Go oh, get me friends. Van Helsing's yeah. granddaughter." It's like, look, when you brought the African American girl back, I know there's adoption and stuff, but th- let's let's get let's get some stuff together here, okay? You know, it's yeah. like just bring him back the the, the granddaughter, okay? Leave Carol yeah. Monroe alive for the love of all that's holy. Yeah. <laughs> that's what exactly. I'm trying to say here. But no, that is a story that he basically keeps bringing him back. Yeah, these girls, and then and the I, red, it, why well, did he bring, yeah. Card. Well, it's, he it, wants yeah. he wants the power himself though. He does, he? and he wants to be yes. vamp- he wants to be vampiric himself. Yes, you're right. Yes. so he's trying so to. Then he becomes yeah. a vampire. Yes. Now, um, Van Helsing's granddaughter's boyfriend, who's actually one of the better characters throughout it, because he doesn't mm-hmm. really believe Johnny Alucard so mm-hmm. much, mm-hmm. and uh, but he shows up to take her um, back to the club because Johnny Alucard has shown up, right? Mm-hmm. And they want answers. But, Timo, being such a smarty pants as I am, I saw an ascot. <laughs> uh, I saw an ascot that I thought, hmm, this gentleman's wearing an ascot. Yeah. And guess what, Timo, right? Yep. What, what happened? They go back to the bar, her boyfriend, and he has now been vampirized, right? Or, or, as, or as Peter Cushing <laughs> always says, too small puncture. Holes yeah. right in the neck, right in the juggler yeah. area. Yes, yeah. yes. So he's in on it now too with Johnny Alucard, mm-hmm. and they're going to uh, take her. Yes, to Dracula. Yes. Um, yeah. This movie. And that Scott didn't fool me though. <laughs> no, no. did not fool me. This movie is <laughs> always fascinating because it fascinated me because it is really bad and really good at the same time. Yeah, and yeah, I I'll really like it. Yeah. And it, but but yeah. I mean. I think the 1972, the grooviness of it is kind of the bad part, and but the horror parts of it are actually pretty damn good. Sure, um, yeah. And the and the and and the two, the bad and the good, throughout the entire film almost stand side by side. Yeah, and it's yeah. just it blows my mind, and um, and I've always liked it because I think I'm fascinated by, it, and I and I like the movie because I never thought I would like Dragon the Hammer shit. Into the the present, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like like dragging all the Dracula stuff because I like the costume periods. I like I like having it back in the eighteen hundreds. I think it's neat to see a period movie like that. But man, they really do it awfully well, and I like how Peter Cushing is kind of the the he's the, the stick in the mud, you know. He's, he's <laughs> yeah, the square, yeah. you know, and everything in it. But he plays it so straight. He yeah, plays it he so straight. And here's the thing too, nineteen seventy two. This came out a couple days apart from when Horror Express with Christopher Lee also really? was released. But if you recall, 
The only reason Peter Cushing did Horror Express was because because Christopher Lee begged him to do it because yeah. his his wife had just died. Right, that's right. And he was yeah. very, and he, he this was one of these uh, very close relationships. You know what I mean? Like this was yeah. like these these people were partners and stuff. And what's really um I don't know the word for it. Um heart-wrenching, I guess. The when the script was written, Peter Cushing was Stephanie Beecham's father. But yeah. but the passing of Cushing's wife aged him so bad that they had to rewrite the script to make him her grandfather. Wow. Okay. That's how bad it aged him. The, yeah. and, and Peter Cushing does a great, great performance for a man who's clearly in mourning. You know, sure. um, and, cause you remember in horror express, he's very timid. He's very weak yeah. almost. And you can tell it's why. And I this, like that movie. Too, I do too. I do too. It's such a good movie. And in this one, he's kind of getting a little bit of that back, but yeah, it's just it, I don't know. You know, you I felt for him the whole time I was watching the movie because I knew that I just felt because I love Pe- I love Peter Crush. Oh, of yeah. course, you know yeah. we all know this. Yeah, I felt so bad for him while I was watching this, but at the same time, had I was amazed by his ethic, his work ethic, his performance in this. I think it was just amazing. I think it was great. Yeah. I mean, given what he was going through, I'm not saying it was an Academy Award or anything. I'm just saying, given what he was going through, he played Van oh, Helsing. Man, can you, you imagine? Know? Yeah, yeah. So, so. Um, but I really did. It is a I think what I like about it, the bad and the good stand side by side. And what other kind of movies are like that? The movies from the 1950s, the giant claw. Yeah. Movies like that. <laughs> and although I think this was turned around a little bit, this had the, the bad was just trying to overemphasize the modern times, like the music, sure. like you're saying, the parties yeah. and stuff. The good stuff was okay. still the horror stuff. Rocking party. <laughs> <laughs> and the good stuff was still the horror stuff. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, the Scotland Yard guys were okay. They weren't too bad. They were they were they served their role trying to figure out what's yeah. going on. And they weren't like so overly aggressive and nah. stuff like that. They were trying yeah. to figure out what's going yeah, on. Yeah, absolutely. They were trying to be sort of open to what Peter Cushing was saying. You right. Know, or exactly. Cushing sorry. And yeah. you know, so the movie itself's pretty good. It is good. Um yep. I, I I said I do enjoy the ladies. Oh, the most they are, oof, they will. <laughs> There's a lot of plunging <laughs> necklines that I do enjoy. Oh, my God. Yeah. But there was some good stuff in the film too, you know, mm-hmm. and I, I do like Cushing and Lee a lot together in any, in most anything. Yeah. You know, they're they're yeah. fun to watch together too. So, yeah. well, I'm going to give, I'm going to give the movie a great vape up another normal one. Same, same yeah. just another, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, the, it was the goofy stuff was funny and kind of awkward, which is always fun to kind of look at, but yeah. it definitely like just the acting and it's pretty, Especially Cushing and Lee. I mean, always are very yeah. good at it. But I mean, it's just a well made movie. It's fun to look at and it's fun to, to uh, just go down that rabbit hole with this movie because yeah. it's kind of weird. <laughs> it's a really weird movie, but it's cool. You know, yeah. so I'm going to give it a great bape up. How about you, Mr. Ben Harley? Yeah, me too. Me too. Okay. Great bape up, my friend. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, no hair flip, though. You know, I noticed that too. And I, I gave him a pass on this one because he was in mourning. Now, he yes. did have a good little wrestling match in the beginning, and there could have been some flippage, <laughs> yeah. but it was kind of yeah, dark. Yeah, he wrestled, what's his name, Johnny Hallucar a little bit. Yeah, he did that too, yeah. yep. So, but in the beginning, <laughs> when he's wrestling Christopher Lee with the with the broken uh, uh, <laughs> wagon, wagon wheel, wheel. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it might have been a flip there, too. I don't know. But, <laughs> it might have uh, been. Yeah, it wasn't a whole lot. He wasn't super, super active in this one. But, I mean, you know what? It still was great. It was good. I, yeah. I, I, I think it's fun. I think it's fun to watch Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee chase each other through the fabric of time like they do exactly. in these movies. So, all right. Well, we got uh, two grape apes up for Dracula AD 72. Yep. I've got a grape ape up. You've got a more mild grape ape up for yeah. House of Horrors starring Rondo Hatton. Uh, and yes, he busted up our trophy in the film, which is yeah, why we were nominated for a rondo, but never <laughs> won. And to be honest Received with you, being nominated it. was fine. I don't care. Yeah, it's a trophy. It a, yeah. It's fine. You know, it's and nice it was, to be recognized. You know what? And that yeah. was exactly, that was, um, that, that was great. Right. I mean, that we were. Yes. You know, so. so. Well, until next week, Mr. Ben Harley, when we work on our next rondo award nomination, yeah. stay spooky. And we'll talk to you then. Keep it creepy, people. You've been listening to the Tim Owen Harley Show. Brought to you by ScreenPrintingFactory.com, your affordable one-stop solution to all your screen printing needs.